Hey guys, this is Derek from Tech Connection again. This is sort of a follow-up to my previous video about the Atom processor and motherboard combo. Uh, I mentioned that I deploy these in the field occasionally, and uh, here's one that's going, getting ready to go out, so I thought I'd film the process. Uh, this little case, this here is an MSI Wind, uh, what they call a net top. So let me get my handy-dandy dollar bill out again. So you can get an idea how big this little guy is, right? About $2 bills in width, one and a half in depth, and in height, it's exactly the height of my dollar bill. This is a pretty handy little case. I like this one a lot. It's got six USB ports, comes with the motherboard, comes with the power supply, and it comes with the CPU. So all you need to do is add some RAM, add a hard drive, and maybe an optical drive if you need one for your purposes and load your operating system and you're you're good to go so I'm gonna go ahead and get myself started here give you a view of the back of the case so here's a view of the back this case uh, we purchased on purpose because it's got the Radeon in it so when you got the Radeon 4330 you're gonna get the standard stuff, but you also get an HDMI, so if this is going to go in your entertainment center, this, uh, this unit is pretty handy. You're going to notice that there's a uh, Wi-Fi antenna, and it's pre-routed, the cable, and uh, the antenna cable going inside the case, but it's not connected to anything. So don't let that one uh, trick you. I forget the exact model that we've got here but I'll link it inside of the video description so that you can go hunt this down but don't think that it comes with a wireless card okay so got my two screws removed just pull the case towards you lift it up let's take it out of the way so the inside of the case looks like this this is the motherboard and CPU in one it's gonna have two internal SATA ports this really cool uh, power and data in one connector and when you're looking inside there's room for one optical and room for one three and a half although your space can be a little tight for the three and a half it should work uh, what I've done for this build is instead of a three and a half I've got a two and a half SSD so we're gonna have to do a little bit of trickery to mount that in place because I don't have a two and a half to three and a half adapter but I built a few of these and I know what I'm doing so it's not that hard if you forget to purchase one of those the reason I'm able to get away with it is I'm not going to use an optical drive so the purpose of this system will not include any kind of optical burning anything like that the customer is not going to be loading software in any event in order to get inside the case we need to remove the front of it these three clips on the top pull it forward a little bit and then it should come off there were three other clips like so and then this will let us mess with the uh, inside I need to take this entire cage out so in order to do that in order to save a little bit of time I got my power tool here generally speaking don't ever want to use a power tool on the inside of your computer because these screws they're basically glorified plastic so they'll strip almost instantly if you're too rough with it so just because it's hard to do that one-handed I cheated a little bit so with that done if you look closely in there you're gonna see that there's a catch that you're going to need to push, uh, it's kind of tricky with one hand, but basically you're going to pull the whole thing towards you and then you're going to lift it out. And before you get too far, there's a cable holding the front panel buttons in place and that'll need to come off. So I'll just arrange it on the side like so for now. And if you need to actually go ahead and install that wireless card that's going to go in the mini PCI slot right here, mini PCI Express. And the antenna, like I said, they routed it. It's waiting for you when the time comes. This unit also takes laptop RAM. 
So since I've got the cover off, I'm going to just do that right now. And I may have said in a past video that on some models, if you were to push that down, you'll actually snap the clips off. This is one such. So you'll need to very, very carefully widen these a bit as you, as you shove it into place. Sorry, it's difficult one-handed. But to get a secure connection, you'll need to pull these back a little bit as you insert it in a downward fashion. So just keep that in mind. We've got room for another one, but two gigs for this application is plenty. I'm going to go ahead and detach the front panel buttons. So I've got my drive cage as a separate piece here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my SSD and I'm going to face it so that the connectors, the SATA connectors, are facing that way. And I'm going to mount it on this side of the five and a quarter bay. If you put it on this side, the cables won't reach. So that's my only reasoning there. So in order to do that, I'm going to flip it over. On this particular model, this black strip gives me a nice place to line up, line up what I'm after. So all you're looking to do is line up the holes. And because this is really challenging one-handed, I'm going to cheat a little bit and pause the video. There we go. So we got that done. Much easier with two hands. So what I'll have done here is my SSD is mounted in that five and a quarter bay. And just two screws is plenty. She doesn't wobble or anything like that. And even if it does, it doesn't matter. There are no moving parts in the SSD, so you can be a little bit less rigid and secured in place than is necessary with a regular hard drive. So I'm going to go ahead and reattach my front panel. Hopefully I don't knock anything over. Sorry, my one-handedness is giving me a bit of a handicap. So I got my front panel reattached. Flip this back into place. There's that catch that I was referring to earlier. So it's going to go into that little socket area. It'll fall down into place once you've got it nicely. There's my SSD looking just right. And then you just shove it back into place from, from where it was. So in my case it'll be a little harder because I don't have all my hands and fingers available to me. And then the other thing that I had noticed in previous uh, experimenting is this lip right here. If it doesn't catch correctly, you're going to have a heck of a time shoving that back. So I may do that manually, where I just have to kind of force it. There we go. So once it's looking correct, this piece goes over that lip and then it'll go backwards as far as it can so everything looks good. I'll get my screw out kind of do it by hand at first. Let's get that screw ready. Cut the next one. Uh, okay, time for the power tool. And again, very gentle. As soon as it fights you, stop it. Otherwise, you'll be drilling that screw out. Okay. So I got everything back in place. Now my cover. One thing I've discovered is that this drive bay area, this will pop out if you hit it all that hard. And I don't like my customers having to see the inside of the case, like if that were to become a poor quality area where this falls inside later, a couple of months after they've got it. I don't really care for that. So sometimes what I'll do is I'll put super glue in these seams, just a small amount, enough to make it secure. And then that'll prevent it from falling out on accident. 
And then when you're returning this item, at least on this case, start with this middle one. Do that one first. You hear that clip. It'll go much smoother if that middle one is the first one. Again, my handicap of being one-handed. But that wasn't too bad as such things go. So there's the whole thing. Put the case back on. Slide it into place. And then we would screw it back in. And we're ready to load our operating system. The way that I've been loading the OS on these is I've been taking my portable CD-ROM and using my USB cable here. So grab that, plug it in. So inside of the USB, I'll load the operating system. Then I'll boot up off USB, format the drive, get the SSD all set, load the OS, load my drivers, and then I'll detach this little guy. And then it'll be ready for deployment. So it's a very small case. It's very lightweight. And there's, I'm sure you saw, there's enough room for another drive if we were really needing that. So if we needed a little bit more space, this would be good. So normally you just load your OS and you'd be set at this point. But I already went ahead and did that on this machine. So just so you guys can get a look at it. So here it is. So the processor registers as four threads. So it's not slow by any means, but I would say if you were comfortable with, say, a uh, Pentium 4, perhaps, this is about the same speed as a Pentium 4, although it has an extra core or two. Do something. We'll go to a website and see if it'll do anything to the cores. So Windows XP, which I foolishly loaded onto this thing, tends to favor the first core most of the time. So usually any spikes would be there. 7 and Vista make much better use of the processor. And then another thing worth pointing out before someone gets me in the comments with it, if you're going to use an SSD, you really should not be using, uh, what is it, XP. You should really not be using XP. It does not make the best use of the SSD technology and probably will shorten the life of it over the long term. The Windows 7 machines will last longer on an SSD than XP will. So this will need a little bit of maintenance in the future because I use that operating system. Well, that's it. That one's ready to go in the field. And I'll just take this one and I'll clone his, op his operating system to this one. It wasn't easy to get XP on there, believe me. And then these two are both ready to go find their new home in the telco closet. And they're going to do their thing for the next few years. Uh, that's it. Thanks for watching. Hope it's been interesting. If there's anything I can answer, just give me a buzz. Thanks. Bye.